Hey guys, it's Bobby Hughes with Heritage Pride Custom Firearms, and I'm here to bring you guys a video today on the Ithaca Mag 10 10 gauge shotgun. This is an auto shotgun, um, meaning that it'll it's a semi-automatic, um, and it's a very stout, very heavy, very tall gun. Um, and uh, I've actually already done all the work that needed to be done on this one. Um, it was a new gun for me. Uh, I had never worked on a, on a Mag-10 before. So uh, I didn't want to do a video on the disassembly uh, up front. I wanted to take the gun apart, put it back together, and then do a video on the disassembly for you. But this gun is a pain in the rear end to do a disassembly on. I mean, you have to do a lot to completely break this thing down. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to walk you through the steps on how to disassemble a firearm. And then uh, I do have the reassembly videos that's going to be, or the reassembly footage that will be on this video as well. So you can see uh, the actual details in the reassembly and just go backwards for the disassembly, obviously. So anyway, this one actually came in because um, it had some trigger problems. Um, the guy that owns it was out hunting one day and he had a round in the chamber, had the weapon on safe, and he set the gun down on the ground and it went off. And so once I did some inspecting on it, I found out that the, uh, the hammer, one of the uh, little tips on the hammer where it catches, um, was broken. And so that's the reason why it wasn't catching all the way when the action would cycle and it, would, it wasn't seating all the way. It was just rubbing and holding with, with friction and when he set it down it knocked it loose and went off. So fortunately no one was hurt during that accident. Well, We've got it fixed. I uh, got it test fired. I'll throw that footage in for you as well. And it fires awesome. I'd never shot a 10 gauge before so uh, you guys are going to get to see my first time shooting a 10 gauge. It's pretty cool. Um, not as bad as I thought it would be. It's a pretty tough gun, but not near as bad as I thought it would be. So we got the trigger all fixed, got the thing cleaned up. It was in horrible condition. Uh, ended up having to uh, change out the, uh, the action spring, the recoil spring, and uh, had to do a lot of work there. There's a lot of rust on this gun underneath all the dirt, a lot of corrosion. We got it all cleaned up, got it greased, waxed, and oiled. And uh, it's ready to go again. So uh, anyway, guys, let me uh, move over to the bench, and I'll show, I'll walk you guys through, um, at least tell you what the steps are in the disassembly process, um, so that you guys can do that, and then watch the reassembly footage, so that you can see how uh, the details in the disassembly, just in reverse. So let's get started. Alright guys, so in the beginning it's pretty much the same takedown as any other shotgun. Alright, you're going to clear the weapon, uh, make sure that it's on safe, and then you can go ahead and remove the front locking nut on the forward, uh, the forward locking nut or takedown nut. You can remove that. Your, um, uh, got a fingerprint on it here. Your forehand will just slide right off. Once you slide the forend off, then you can go ahead and remove the barrel. All right. So after you remove the barrel, then what you're going to want to do is there is actually the gas shroud or the gas sleeve uh, that goes over the magazine tube. You go ahead and pull that off. All right. So now you've got the whole front taken down. Once you get the front taken down, then you want to go ahead and pop out your two pins that hold your trigger assembly in place. Pull your trigger assembly out. Once you have your trigger assembly out, then the hard, the hard part starts. You want to put it in a vise or something so that you can get a good grip on it. And you're going to remove the butt pad. Once you remove the butt pad, underneath there, there's going to be a quarter inch Allen nut or an Allen screw. And you're going to take that off. Once you take that out, the butt stock will just slide off. And inside of the butt stock, there is the recoil spring guide tube. All right, and that is actually screwed into the receiver. So you want to go ahead and take that off. The reason why I say go ahead and take that off is because inside of that tube 
gets disgusting nasty. And in the case with this one, the spring had actually rusted itself to the tube, and so therefore it twisted itself and kinked and made a huge mess. So you want to go ahead and pull your spring out and get that cleaned up as well. Get that tube and that spring cleaned up real good. Once you pull the guide um, or the re recoil spring tube off, then you will see that there are two linkages. There's one that's actually back here that you can barely see the tip of inside. And then there's another little short guide rod uh, or uh, link um, that connects to the... Uh, uh, the seat for the bolt, all right? Um, and so what you're going to do is just pull the whole bolt assembly backwards to where that linkage will come back outside of the frame and you can push the pin out to remove the linkage. And then from there, you push the other linkage with the uh, bolt, the seat to the bolt, the carrier actually. Um, you can push it back in, push it up out, and then you can pull the bolt back again and lift the bolt uh, or lift the, the bolt carrier um, out of the gun and then push the actual bolt or the firing pin carrier out of the front where the barrel actually comes in. Once you get there you're pretty much completely disassembled. The only other thing that I would say is you want to disassemble the gas piston setup on the barrel lug and uh, that consists of actually unscrewing um, the main component or the main ring on the uh, the gas piston and then the piston just pulls right out of the barrel lug. So it's a lot, that's pretty much it for the whole disassembly. It's a lot simpler sounding than what it really is. Um, but uh, let's go test fire this thing uh, now that I've got the trigger work and everything done and then I'll show you the reassembly part uh, right after that. start with the reassembly of our gas system on the on the barrel lug here all right so um, the barrel now the front of the barrel the muzzle is actually in this direction I don't know if you can see it in the video I'm trying to get a close-up for you and the rear of the of the barrel is back here up here all right so on this side of the lug you actually have a little gas uh, pin all right that sticks out so the first thing we're going to do now, like I said before, I'm just going to show you guys the reassembly, but disassembly obviously would be the same way, just um, reverse. So what we're going to do is with this flange here, the big part of the gas piston facing backwards, we're going to go ahead and run our uh, gas piston through the hole in the lug, and this pin will actually fit in the big uh, the big hole on the gas piston. So um, before I do that, I'm going to oil this up. I waxed all this real good, but the gas piston is a very sticky area for carbon. So I'm going to go ahead and, and make sure that it's good and oiled up. <clears throat> all right. So the next thing after that is the uh, we've got a washer a lock washer that goes on here and then I'm going to take a little bit of blue thread locker not a lot just a little bit and blue is not permanent so that's the reason why we're going with blue now we'll thread this little piece right here on now I'm sure there's a wrench out there you can get for this thing to make it easier to lock that on there. But what, I, what I'm going to use, because I don't have the wrench, is I'm just going to use a punch and just tighten it down the best I can using the holes that are in it. Just like that. And it doesn't have to be torqued down. That's why you have that lock washer on there. All right. Once you get that done, then you're going to take your sleeve, hollow part of the sleeve, right down over top of there. And then we want to go ahead and put 
or the little locking or locking ring on there. And that's it. Now, what one thing I did want to point out that I forgot to do is all the little holes in this gas system, in the barrel lug and in the actual piston itself, you want to go ahead and punch those out with a with a pick or something like this. Just pick those out and blow them out real good. Make sure that there's no carbon buildup inside of those holes. So that's how you put the gas assembly back, the pist gas piston assembly back together. So let's move to the receiver now. All right, guys. So we're ready to start reassembly of the receiver now that we've got the barrel done. So um, first thing we're going to do is I've got the receiver bolted up here in or clamped up here in the vise, um, and we're going to start with the actual bolt itself. All right, so I've waxed the bolt, I've waxed the inside of the receiver real good. And so what we're going to do is go ahead and reinstall that. Before I do that, I want to tell you guys about the bolt or the slide buffer or bushing. Um, and the typical, pretty much all auto type shotguns have some sort of bolt slide bushing or, or uh, buffer. But typically they're mounted in the back of the receiver. They're just pop in or whatever. On the MAC-10, it actually is attached to the bolt itself with a pin. So you want to check that, make sure that it's not too brittle or anything like that. So first thing we're going to do is go ahead and reinstall the bolt. It goes upside down and you're going to run it in through the opening in the front of the receiver where the barrel would actually go. Alright, so we're just going to set that right inside of here. And then we'll go with the bolt block and the, and the rod here. Um, you can actually take the rod assembly apart, but it's easier to go ahead and do it like this. So you're going to push this all the way to the back, push the bolt all the way to the back, and then we're going to go ahead and set our bolt block down inside here. And um, you got to kind of go down in a V like this because this hook right here, this notch, catches in a pin on the actual bolt itself. So we're going to go down and back just like that and then push it forward all the way to the front drop that uh, rod down inside of there and then through the hole in the back here we'll just grab it and pull it out all right just like that now we are ready to go ahead and reinstall um, the back rod here and this is what actually uh, the spring will attach to here in just a little bit so we're going to go ahead and install that right back on here and put the pin through it and then we can go ahead and push our bolt assembly back to the front and we'll let it hang like that. Now one thing that I do want to recommend, and you can see on this one it's in pretty bad shape, uh, in this specific gun I doubt this thing's ever been cleaned, ever from the looks of it. And the spring was actually rusted into the uh, spring guide tube. All right. And it was rusted and corroded in there. It was pretty bent up and torqued out. So I've actually got a new spring that's going to go in place of that. So to prevent that rust, you want to put a good coat of oil inside of the spring guide tube. And on the spring as well. And then we want to put a good coat on here. It doesn't have to be real thick, but you want to make sure that it has a good coat on it. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and use my barber brush here and go ahead and put a good coat of oil on this thing. Let's see, you don't want it dripping off of it, but you want to make sure that it's got a good coat on it. That helps with tape down the next time. Alright, so now we'll go ahead and the best way to do this is take your spring tube and your spring, we'll put a little bit of oil on our spring, don't have to put a lot on it, but a good light coat. That'll keep the carbon and the rust from building up on it. And we'll just drop it down in the tube. And then the fun part begins. Got it down on there. Now, because the tension is on this, you want to make sure that you don't cross thread these fine threads on this thing. So be real careful when you're first starting and make sure that it's on there correctly. 
Alright, and then we're going to take just a little bit of our blue thread locker. Doesn't take a whole lot. We just want to get enough on there that it gets a good seal once it gets in. Just like that. Just hand tighten it. No need to torque it down because what will torque it down um, a little bit better is when we put the buttstock back on it. And speaking of that, we're ready to go ahead and reinstall the buttstock. Now the buttstock will just slide right down over the spring guide tube. And where's the bolt? And then we've got a bolt that goes right in the back here and threads right into that spring tube. No need to put any thread locker on that. Make sure that our stock is lined up. Tighten that down. And then we can go ahead and reinstall the butt pad, which is pretty self-explanatory. Alright guys, so we've got the back end of the gun put back together now, so we're ready to go ahead and start putting the front end of the gun back together now. So I've got my, uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just put the charging handle back in here. And it just slides down in there and uh, what actually keeps it in place is when we get the bolt back in there, it pushes the, or the barrel, it pushes the bolt down and locks it into place. So what we'll go ahead and do now is go ahead and put our trigger assembly back in. Um, now of course you want to go ahead and make sure that you've got everything lubed and oiled and greased and everything that anything that you've wanted to do inside here is done because we're getting ready to seal it back up here. So grease it, oil it, lube it, whatever you want to do inside of there. And then I've already oiled our uh, trigger assembly up here. So we're ready to go ahead and reinstall that. So we'll just slide that back into place, put our pins in, and this gun goes back together so much easier once it's clean. This thing was so disgusting dirty. Um, and then we will go ahead and uh, start on the front here. Um, first thing we're going to do is this uh, our uh, gas tube or our sleeve here has to go back into place. So um, what I did was I took some oil and just oiled up the inside of it once I got it clean. So we'll go ahead and slide that back on here. And then it goes, you'll see how it goes, it just locks right into those holes there. Alright, and then we will take and the next thing I want to do is I'm going to put a little bit of grease around our gas piston here before we reinstall it. Mainly just around that that uh, clip there, that ring, that retainer clip, retainer ring. And that'll just help the thing come back off easier next time. And then of course um, you want to put a little bit of oil on the top part there of the, uh, of the barrel where it goes into the action. So we'll go ahead and slide this into place. You may have to pull the action back when you're sliding it into place. Unfortunately it's hard to get it to lock back when the barrel's not in. Let's put that in place and then we'll go ahead and slide our four in. All 
right. All right, guys. So that's the uh, the details on the Ithaca Mag Ten. Uh, like I said, um, sorry I didn't do the disassembly part on you. This was actually my first time on this gun, um, and so it was kind of I didn't want to make a video on how to disassemble it if I didn't know how to disassemble it. So it took me a little while to get it all figured out. Unfortunately, it's hard to find the owner's manual unless you just happen to have one. Uh, it's hard to find them online. So uh, hopefully this helps if you have you know any issues with your Ithaca Mag 10 on disassembly and reassembly. Uh, so anyway guys until next time get out there shoot some guns be safe and most importantly have fun. See you guys later.